whenever I think of First Solid Communion, I always think of this little joke I once. Well, maybe it's not a joke. Maybe it really happened. I don't know. <clears throat> it's a story of a, this, old, uh, this old woman. And she lived, she was very poor, and so she lived in a little shack. She, she, had, she had no money. And she lived next door to this rich man who lived in a great big mansion. Now, this poor woman, she was a woman of great faith. But the, the rich man, he, he was an atheist and didn't believe in God either, right? And they used to fight all the time, do things, uh, you know, nasty neighbours do to each other, you know, shout at each other over the fence, dump their garbage over them. Just, it was a terrible relationship. Terrible. And then one day, this the rich old man, he's sitting in his mansion, he's looking out his balcony, and now comes the poor old lady out of her shack dragging her feet, dragging her feet. And he's watching all this from his balcony. And she falls on her knees and she looks to the heavens and she says, Lord, send me bread from heaven. I'm starving down here. Gets up, goes back into her shack. The old man looks at her and he thinks, I hate her, I can't stand her. But she's poor and I'm rich. I should do something about this. It's, it's the right thing to do. So he goes off to the supermarket and he gets all these loaves of bread. And while the old woman's in the house, he sneaks into her backyard and he gets the loaves of bread and he lays them out in a line. And then he sneaks out and runs back to his house and sits up on his balcony waiting for her. Well, finally, the old lady comes out and she sees this, all these loaves of bread on the ground in her backyard. And she falls on her knees in front of the bread and says, Oh, Lord, thank you for sending me this bread from heaven. And the old atheist guy, he can't take this anymore. And he shouts out at her and he says, Hey! And she looks over at him and he says, God didn't give you that bread. Oh, I delivered it. And the old lady looks at the bread looks at the old man, looks back at the bread and looks up to the heavens and says, and thank you, Lord, for having it delivered by the devil. <laughs> bread from heaven, bread from heaven. That is what you truly receive today. Nothing I can possibly say can make a big enough deal about today. All these people here today, they're all for you. It's one of the greatest days of your life. I can still remember my first Holy Communion in 19, uh, <laughs> last century, right? Seven, I was only seven when we made it in there. And I still remember it. It's a glorious day, right? Wonderful, right? Looks like bread, but it's the body of Christ. Looks like bread, tastes like bread. Same with the wine. Looks like wine, tastes like wine. The blood of Christ. Christ comes to us in his body, blood, soul, and divinity. You see, before this Mass is, is out, our Lord's body and blood will mingle with yours. Right? You and he will be brothers, brothers and sisters of the same family. We don't think about it much, but where did your body and blood come from already? From your parents, isn't it? Right? You got your body and blood from your, from your mother and your father. So, same with me. You know? I got my dark hair from my father and a few of my greys from my grandfather. You know, he's, and I got my mother's brown eyes. I didn't get her good looks, but I got her brown eyes, right? And it's, you children have got your parents' body and blood in you. You don't realise it. That's why you should, should always be tremendously grateful to your parents. But it didn't just end with your birth, did it? Since then, they look after you and they nurture you and they grow you. That's why you love your parents so much. That's why they love you so much themselves. They see a bit of themselves in you and they're right to do that. And so in the Holy Communion, we receive the body and blood of Jesus. If we want to, if we try, we can be more like him. You see, we should be good to people. You say, oh, that's obvious. It's not always obvious. I used to write uh, this newspaper in the column, and the newspaper used to share it on Facebook, and all these hundreds of people write really mean things. I didn't even know them. And the worst thing was one day I thought, I do know that guy. I did his wedding once. <laughs> yeah. But we, 
as Christians and as receivers of the body and blood of Christ, we live our life better because of that. Sometimes the Eucharist is called the sacrament of charity. Right? All the other sacraments, they bring you close to Christ. The Eucharist, you receive Christ. And the reason why we call it the sacrament of charity is that you say, look, if we want to come forward and receive Holy Communion, we've got to have communion. You say, what does communion mean? Togetherness. Communion with God, but also communion with each other. One of my favourite saints is a Scottish saint called St Margaret of Scotland, and she lived almost a 1,000 years ago. And she said, charity begins in the home. Do you know what that means? Who have you got to be nice to first? Your family, the people you live with. That's the first thing, you know. It's easy to be good at, to people we never see very often. See it twice a year. or oh, G'day, mate, how are you? He's a lovely bloke, isn't he, you know. But to be nice and good to your family, that's wonderful. You, in an even deeper way, come into the family of the church today. But also that expectation that this can make you better. See, I don't eat very well. I don't eat very well, and it shows. Huh? But in the body of Christ, you improve your soul. Mother Teresa once said something. She was a great saint, changed the world in many ways. And she said, we as Catholics are able to see God in the poor because we can see God in a piece of bread. Yeah? We are eternal beings in a limited body. So today, our prayers are with you and it's the first of many Holy Communions. It's a great mystery today, more beautiful than anything we can even believe or even understand. Have a quick look around. Look at all these people. Have, have a quick look. No one's watching. Look, look at those people down there, all the smiles on their faces and how happy they are. It's all for you. It's all for you. Right? Let us, and for you as the families, let's pray for these lovely little angels. Did I not see 33 angels walk out here? only a few minutes ago, eh? and you saw them too. Pray for them. God can do great things in their innocent little hearts with your support, your prayers. And children, never forget the body of Christ. It's the sacrament that makes us like Jesus.